Hello, this is Corazon Alvina of the Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo, or MUSCAT. MUSCAT is a foundation that tends to museum development, research, and conservation of material culture and the layers of kaalaman or knowledge behind the creation. During these times of restricted face-to-face -face interaction, MUSCAT has been active in sharing its collection, research work and stories in its publications, online lectures and exhibitions, and a podcast entitled Usapin Usapan, a venue for an informed and informative conversation between MUSCAT, represented by yours truly, and one subject matter expert. Today, we have a conversation with Datu Sharif Pendatu, cultural and historical researcher, essayist, food scholar, and chef from Manila. He started his career when he joined a multinational consumer goods company as one of its corporate chefs. Pendaton has since collaborated with various international food service brands. As a writer, he has edited and contributed to different publications, such as Art Post Asia's Muslim Mindanao and the Sulu Archipelago, The Current of Narratives, Anvil Publishing's Savor the World, Bida Dali Press's Rays of the Invisible Light, Collected Works by Young Moro Writers, and Negros Cultural Foundation's The Adobo Chronicles. Pendatun is a recipient of the Doreen Gamboa Fernandez Food Writing Awards. Hello, Datu. First, I would like to thank you very much for agreeing to do this podcast with us, a podcast on cooking with and the coconut, other delicious matters that will surely crop up, and stories and narratives that are Muslim Mindanao in character and a flavor. Perhaps the best way to start is with the major ingredient, the coconut. Uh, the coconut is ubiquitous in these parts and many other tropical regions, and as such has been food for both humans and animals, the nut in the various parts according to preferences and predilection. Apart from this availability, as a chef who has had actual experience in cooking and eating, and I had the pleasure of uh, partaking of one such meal, what is it about the coconut that interests you, either as one who uses it as an ingredient or a diner who consumes it in various ways? Please tell us. Well, first of all, um, thank you for having me. Um, it is indeed an honor. Uh, the coconut is so multifaceted. Uh, there's so many layers and dimensions to it that uh, provides pleasure, not only to the, to the eating, but to the cooking experience as well. So it gives us so many things. Um, as we know, uh, it's one of those plants uh, found here in the tropics, wherein uh, we get to use not only the fruit, but the leaves, we get to use its sap. We get to use trunk as uh, lumber. When we talk of the fruit itself, we get to use it when it's mature. We get to use it when it's not quite mature yet. We get to use its water. We get to use so many things and in so many different ways. So it really is quite fascinating. But the use and eating of the coconut is not confined to the Philippines or Philippine areas such as Mindanao, uh, Luzon's coconut belt, is it? Uh, other parts of the region should also be part of our conversation because not only due to proximity, but the shared flora that is the coconut. So would they yeah. likewise share a congruent experience uh, you had said uh, previously, autochthonous with hints of China and Hindu that were draped in thin veils of Islam in Europe when they use the coconut. Would you like to explore that area? Oh, yeah, definitely. So when we speak of uh, Muslim Mindanao in that context, um, and when we talk about uh, this particular ingredient, um, it would be, I think, helpful for us to look at it vis-a-vis -vis our neighbors to the south. So we're talking about um, the Malay Peninsula, we're talking about Borneo, we're talking about uh, Indonesia. 
Mm-hmm. Um, likewise, uh, Muslim Mindanao's neighbors to the north, which is the Philippines. Um, so we use coconut in so many different ways. Um, um, so remember that uh, the lunch that you mentioned. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the idea there was that um, among the different cuisines of Muslim Mindanao, the cuisines are the food of its different ethnolinguistic groups. Coconut is used in a in a in a, in a different in, in, in a variety of ways. So that in that particular instance, I spoke of a coconut spectrum. Uh-huh. So a color spectrum and the flavor spectrum. Okay. As a matter of fact. So normally, uh, when we speak of uh, the coconut, at least um, in the Philippine context. Um, well, oftentimes, I mean, uh, we talk about nyug, we talk mm-hmm. about kinayod na nyug, we talk about grated coconut. Okay. So we speak of its meat, um, which is white, which mm-hmm. is uh, which has a which has a milder flavor, uh, still very rich. Um, but um, in in the Muslim Mindanao context, um, and likewise in the context of the cuisines. Of Indonesia, present-day Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei Darussalam, and Singapore, we see coconut in its roasted form. Okay, um, that brings about not only a difference in color, which makes it brown, but also in flavor as well. So, if we have a ginetaan, for example, um, say in uh, in in the Visayas, mm-hmm. um, we use coconut milk on, by itself. By itself, Where, yeah. So uh, we just use coconut. Uh, we, we get we get the coconut. Uh, we get we scrape off the, the flesh. Mm-hmm. Uh, we squeeze out. Um, well, first of all, we scrape it using a uh, kaguran. I think it's mm-hmm. also good to talk about the implements. Um, the kudkuran. The kudkuran or a kaguran, yeah. um, and then it's 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 a it's a stool uh, uh-huh. with a with a metal. Um, protruding um, that's uh, a protruding piece of metal that's attached mm-hmm. to it um, so with that we get to grate our coconut and mm-hmm. then there are a few different techniques right um, some people would add tepid water others would elect to add warmer or hot water to extract the coconut milk mm-hmm. others would use it freestyle um, just meaning squeeze it uh, and let it drip from their hands, uh, from their fingers. And others would choose to use a uh, cheesecloth. So, in the That's, context... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. But uh, you, I, I like that one uh, where they just squeeze without putting anything. Don't you need a little bit of water to coax it along? Yes, some people would uh, add water and uh, some people would not. It really depends on the application. So for some um, dishes or some applications, uh, more liquid is needed, mm-hmm. as you said, to coax you know, the, the cream or the, or the other milk. Um, so in the context of uh, most of the Philippines, it okay. would just be touch. Um, oh. Whereas... In, uh, in uh, say, in Maguindanao uh, cookery. Mm. Uh, so we have that. But at the same time, um, to color the, the coconut milk okay. for the cream, mm-hmm. turmeric is added um, oh. to the grated coconut. Uh, if we look at the different cuisines uh, across the globe, uh, we find turmeric being added separately. In uh, Maguindanao and Kokiri, uh, mm-hmm. grated turmeric is added to grated coconut and squeezed yes. together. So when you squeeze it, uh, you know, something golden comes out. Uh, squeezed together? Yes, without having to add turmeric anymore uh, later okay. in the cooking process. All right. Um, so there's a dish called linigil or liningil or linigid, which I believe you were able to sample in mm-hmm. that, in that uh, afternoon. Um, we're in to the coconut and the protein 
which could be chicken, which could be chevron or kid, mm-hmm. uh, even beef for that matter. To that, um, roasted coconut is added. So that's when you know another layer, another dimension of flavor comes to into play. Mm-hmm. Um, if we look uh, at the other end of the spectrum, okay, at, uh, the cuisine of the Tausug people. They do have this ingredient, which they call siunug lahing, which is essentially just burnt coconut meat. Um, the siunug lahing is when they get the coconut shell with the meat, and then mm-hmm. they roast it over the fire or over coals until it's okay. black, completely black. Completely black. black. Charred. And oh. then um, that charred part is scraped off, and then the the coconut is uh, placed back onto the, mm-hmm. and you know, and until until they until they get everything out. Now, this becomes an essential ingredient um, in what they call their pamapa itum. Pamapa itum. So it's like a spice paste. Uh, okay. Sort a fresh. Well, one of. Uh, the siunog lahing or burnt coconut and fresh spices such as uh, fresh turmeric mm-hmm. um, and then you know it, it, some people would add it, ginger and then um, to this well this 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 particular paste it's added to a different you know a, a number of dishes so mm-hmm. among the more popular ones well when I say popular at least in the past I don't know five years okay. um, outside of the tausug uh, sphere, cultural sphere, which is mainly uh, Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, North Borneo, and Zamboanga City. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's gained popularity, I suppose, because of its novelty. Um, dishes such as Chula Itum, which is a soup of uh, beef or goat meat, and uh, Piangang, which is a grilled chicken dish. Yes. Um, there are a few other applications, but those are the two more uh, popular ones. So we see from the white of the coconut milk, and then we have the um, uh, roasted brown of the you know the roasted coconut, and then the burnt chard. So it really it really is a spectrum. Um, but, yeah, go ahead. Tell me about the soup. I'm interested in the soup that's black. Oh yeah. So well. It interests me as well for several reasons. Um, we'll get to the black part, but before we get to that, I'd like to speak of the its name first, uh, um, Tula Itum. Okay, please uh, do. So Tula Itum is its name to some people, but apparently its original appellation is Tula Sug. Um, in reference to the Tausug. Mm-hmm. In reference to you know the, um, that culture, um, to me it's interesting because it speaks of affinity with the other ethnolinguistic groups mm-hmm. in the Philippines that aren't Islamized, that aren't part of the quote unquote Bangsamoro region or Bangsamoro okay. area or mm-hmm. the areas that are Islamized. Um, All right. Um, so it 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 shows a relationship uh, with the Tola of the Cebuanos, mm-hmm. um, the Tinola of uh, the Tagalogs. Okay. So, Tula um, is, to the Tausogs, it's a soup, basically. Because they do have Tula, Tula, I mean, just Tula by itself without the itum part or without the sub, which is just with turmeric. Mm-hmm. Um, but when pamapa or the or the siunog lahing is added, it you know it uh, transmogrifies because you know it, you have something clear, you have something very um, ordinary if you can call it that. Mm-hmm. Then you add something you know quite unusual, which is uh, black. Um, in in the Filipino context, um, black to us. To our food is uh, either um, black pepper or uh, uh, squid ink, which isn't even black per se. 
Um, even Dinuguan isn't really black. So you have something like that. And then you have black, which has tinges of uh, yellow or mm-hmm. green because of the turmeric. So it's really quite something when, when, you, when, you, when you taste it, um, when you see it. Uh, flavor-wise, it does contribute a unique flavor. Um, people tend to assume um, that there is a bitterness to it, but uh, surprisingly, um, there's this alchemy that uh, transpires mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Where, wherein it's not bitter at all. Um, it's, 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 even, it's, it's really quite subtle, actually. Uh, the flavor that uh, the burnt coconut imparts when uh, combined with other fresh spices such as lemongrass. And in the context of chula ito, galangal, um, and chilies, and, you know, th- those kinds of uh, spices. Yes. Is galangal native to uh, Mindanao? Yes. Uh, so galangal is used um, in the different uh, dishes that use coconut. Mm-hmm. Uh, galangal in sinug or bahasa sug is uh, mm-hmm. lengkwas. Um, oh, which, the one, the langkawas. Which is Lengkwas. similar to the Tagalog and uh, Hiligaynon and Bisaya, langkawas. langkawas. However, oh, in basa ng Maguindanao, uh, to the Maguindanao, it is uh, tikwas. Whereas tikwas. to the Maranao, it is tekoas. So yes, uh, we do use it in, in, in the different in dishes that we prepare. In, in but not, yeah. not up here in Luzon. I've not seen it. Um, the only encounter I've had with, well, aside from the, from the Pamparegla, aside from the medicinal, mm. you know, aside from that uh, world, no? um, uh, in terms of food, I've encountered it in Bicol, uh, oh. which is, you know, uh, well, Kind of Visayan also in a way. Mm, um, yes, yes. But uh, yeah, but in Luzon, that's the only time I've encountered uh, Galangal, uh, in, uh, which is, yeah, in Bicol. Yeah. yeah. Ako naman, the only time I've uh, encountered burnt coconut in Luzon is the kulawo. Oh, yeah. You know, when they burn the grated coconut and right. make it gata and cook uh, talong. Yes. Yeah, so, but, so that was the only time. Uh, yeah, I uh, encountered uh, Kulawo and its uh, cousin in Bicol, mm-hmm. um, Tinutungan. Yeah, uh, uh, is similar. So for to me, it's kind of like in between. Uh, it's not well. The thing with Kulawo or Tinutungan is that you burn parts of it, mm-hmm. um, and not not the entirety of it, right? The coconut meat. And then, uh, but the one I tried was, you yeah. know, they, he grated the coconut meat, he put yeah. it in a pan, and he put burning, you know, coals That's and, right. and burnt everything, you know, and then removed the coals and made gata. That's right. So you squeeze it out. So there's yeah. Still, yeah. still fat left, there's still water left. Whereas if you talk about the sinuglahing of the tao soup, mm-hmm. there's, nothing, okay. there's nothing left, really. It's nothing left. Uh, burnt, the burnt uh, material. So flavor-wise, I would say kulawo would be smokier. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, it, it's, it's quite different from the, from the and even color-wise, because which, which, which I find really, really fascinating. Um, uh, in both kulawo and tinutungan contexts, mm-hmm. uh, the resulting coconut milk or coconut cream is gray, right? Which is, which is, another, which is another thing altogether, <laughs> right? Uh, for me, it's, it's really awesome. It's an in between register. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Both in color, both in I suppose texture and as well yeah. uh, the the taste. But I'm also interested in the play of, of flavors. You know, spices with the uh, the coconut milk. How the gata is uh, the gata as we know it would uh, hardly be this. You know, uh, discernible. Yeah, because of the burning, because of uh, the spices. Uh, what? Yeah. So it's used for the creaminess and I suppose the texture. But would there be something of its inherent taste that you could, you know, pick up when you eat? Um, it does have a flavor of its own, mm-hmm. which 
which plays very which which uh, contributes um, prominently uh, mm-hmm. to any application to any dish. So I would say, aside from its flavor, um, okay. it also have because essentially, well, if you look at uh, coconut milk, mm-hmm. um, uh, a significant um, it, when you look at its composition, a significant part of it is fat. Yes. Uh, so it's not just the uh, uh, the other components. So it the fat in itself uh, would contribute greatly to the experience, to the to the sensations mm-hmm. uh, in our palates, right? Um, so mm-hmm. I, I like that you mentioned, you know, the the flavors and all these things. Um, I, I, I'd like to uh, mention as well, um, in the Maranao context, uh, if I may, um, there's such a thing as uh, papar. Uh, so just grated coconut in itself that's used in savory dishes. Mm-hmm. So aside from the flavor um, of the gata um, um, and the fat component, you know, that, that gives it that creaminess, that unctuousness, uh, mm-hmm. they also have the... The bite, right? Because in, if you look at the cuisines of um, uh, the Visayas and Luzon, uh, when you speak of uh, grated coconut, it's normally okay. used in sweet um, uh, applications. Uh, whereas in, in, in among the Maranaos, they, they use it as uh, it's part of the ulam. It's part of the savory uh, fare, uh, the grated coconut. Okay. So, that, yeah, it's really, really quite versatile. But anyway, the other one that I have been curious about is, um, is it purely environmental, the use of coconut, you know, part of the ecosystem? Or is there any element of the religious uh, in in, in the consumption of uh, the preparation, the consumption of uh, coconut? Uh, Well, yes, it is indeed. I suppose, well, environmental. I mean, everywhere you go Mm -hmm. uh, in that region. So not only in Muslim Mindanao, but as I mentioned, Mm. uh, it's neighbors to the north. uh, And, you know, in most parts of maritime Southeast Asia, um, coconut is really ubiquitous. So I've I've had the the pleasure, well, the experience of uh, driving through... Uh, Malabang in Lano del Sur, mm-hmm. so, you know, endless, endless, uh, an endless uh, um, plantation, a uh, rows of coconut trees. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you know, the, the most coconut I've seen in my life. Um, <laughs> aside from uh, the environmental factors, well, it does uh, figure in uh, the spirituality, at least yes. I can say of the Maguindanao and people. Okay. Um, this is something I would term uh, personally um, okay. as extra-Islamic because some right. people would like to say pre-Islamic but um, mm-hmm. I haven't really uh, I haven't really um, thought about it uh, that way. But yes, mm-hmm. I mean, I suppose um, Islam came and there was something before that. Okay. Uh, but for me, that's, that's you know, that's uh, hypothetical. So to mm. me, it's Islamic in a sense that um, if we look at Islam in, in um, say, quote-unquote, its pure uh, form or okay. uh, in its form as a Semitic uh, belief system, if it mm-hmm. makes sense, uh, there's really no room for, for the uh, rituals, uh, the rituals. Uh, quote unquote extra Islamic rituals that require offerings uh-huh. of coconut flowers, uh, for example, oh. um, that requires uh, coconut water as a as a beverage in, in order for an entranced person to come to his senses, right? So Ooh. that's why I call it extra Islamic. So um, the and. As, well, based on my travels and observations, um, it's not limited to um, uh, the Maguindanaon peoples. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we go to Maranao, they do practice uh, these rituals also. Um, even uh, uh, the Javanese 
even the Bali ni Sendino, other, uh, again, quote-unquote, um, Austronesian ethnolinguistic mm. groups okay. have analogous uh, practices. We're in uh, groups of people or um, uh, designated persons uh, go into a trance. And then uh, a lot of times uh, these um, activities involve offerings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in these offerings, um, somehow coconut finds uh, its, uh, itself uh, um, there. So... It has a role. Uh, yes. No, oh, it has a role. So, like as I mentioned earlier, um, in the Magindanao and uh, Kapagipat ritual, mm-hmm. so uh, the flowers or the pods um, okay. are part of that offering. Ah, that's interesting um, because uh, I find the the flowers of, of all of these because they are future. Uh, they are the future. Fruits, the past of yeah, all yeah. of this removal from from that sometimes uh, interests me in a way. But I suppose you know if this so uh, the removal of those uh, flowers, let's say uh, uh, from the coconut or from the uh, nipa, um, does not uh, really diminish from the population. Uh, and uh, of course, you know that among the palms, the buri palm, the, the most oh, one of the most stately when it flowers. It's about to die, you know. It's it's a it's an announcement of his death. But anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about when you were talking about the color uh, spectrum, the coconut spectrum of white to black, from fresh to burnt. You mentioned uh, the Maranao papa. Yes, but you didn't mention the palapa, which oh. is Magin, oh, which yeah. is Magindanao. You know, yes. that, that, and it is. E- it really is interesting because I find that it is, you know, you can eat it as is, you can eat it as ulam, you use it to, to as a relish and as a spice to, to flavor other things. Yes. And I think I told you once that I put, I put it on buttered toast and it tasted great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, palapa, yes, is, is great. Um, it really is very enjoyable. And... Um, Again, it, it has become uh, a phenomenon, I would say, uh, mm-hmm. past uh, five years. So, palapa, um, in the Maguindanao context, yes. is roasted coconut with okay. spices. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting because uh, the same word refers to something else in the Maranao, uh, among the Maranao. So, palapa to the Maranao is uh, something else altogether. But both, both are condiments and both are okay. can also serve as ingredients. Okay. Uh, but and palapa in the Maranao context would be based on an alium, alium chinense, uh, which alium. they call sakurab. Uh, alium chinense. So it's, so um, it's a shallot? Is it, is it, it is an related onion? To a shallot. Yes, it is related to uh, onion. Um, and uh, well, apparently because of its... Um, nomenclature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yeah. think we can uh, we can uh, assume that it is it has roots in China somehow. Yeah. Um, so that's the Maranao Palapa, and it really it well, it gets quite confusing because the Maranao Palapa also makes use of roasted coconut. Can okay. make use of roasted coconut, which they call tiulo. So um, yeah. tiulo in the Maranao in Maranao. Is yes. the palapa of the Magindanao, which is also the bubuk of the tausug, um, the tinu of the kaagan, right? So we see we see the same ingredients having different names, more or less. Different, different yeah. yeah. Different names only, but the same form. The one that I see, which is a yes. you know a brown, uh, like a desiccated coconut, but it's yes. spicy. It's it's all of those. I mean. Yes, uh, um, all of those names yeah. pertain to that. The, yes. the, the, the what I'm describing. With slight variations with uh, in terms of uh, the ingredients used. So again, um, uh, you know, it, it, it really depends on the person making it. But generally, the Magindanaons can add garlic, ginger, uh, dried chili, galangal uh, mm-hmm. uh, to it, and of course, salt. No, for uh, yeah. seasoning it. 
Um, likewise for the Maranao. The Taosug, however, I've seen versions of it with uh, uh, turmeric. Uh, um, they also put... Uh, um, I've seen versions. I'm not. No, no, I'm not sure anymore if it's um, tausug or kagan, but with dried fish, no. Um, you know, for salt in the umami. Right? Go, so, go, go uh, I mean to say, incorporated into yes, the palapa. Yes, yes, incorporated into palapa. And yeah, I must make mention also of uh, the Maranao palapa. Um, while quite different, um, I've had versions and I've seen versions that have smoked fish mixed into it. So this, this, this plays into the idea that it, is, it can be, you know, uh, a, uh, a dish, or a, not a dish, but a, a food on its own to go with rice. So it's mm-hmm. that flavorful. Yeah. yeah. Do you think we can have a Palapa uh, festival at some <laughs> point? I mean, to put all of these together, I think would be uh, truly interesting. Yeah. Diba? Yeah, yeah. And to have a taste, taste of everything. There would be a difference also in the registry of Scovilles. Which one is the hottest, the spiciest? <laughs> or are yeah. they pantay-pantay in, in Anghang? Okay. Um, generally speaking, in terms of uh, Anghang, uh, it's really that Maranao in Taosugs, uh, well, Kaagans uh, for that matter mm. also, who are more keen uh, when it comes to heat uh, mm-hmm. in the form of uh, chili peppers. So I've noticed that the Maginda nouns are quite, you know, more reticent when it comes to uh, heat in their food. Really? Um, okay. Uh, likewise, uh, well, I may, be, may be, I may be mistaken for the Yakans, no? but uh, in, in the Sama. Uh, but uh, I noticed it's really the, the Kagan, the Baranao, and Taosu who like their heat. Mm-hmm. But the Palapa, does it keep long? Oh, um, yeah. I really don't know the, the uh, chemistry of it. But yes, it months, mm-hmm. months. I mean, um, if you, you know about the, uh, the practice we're in. Um, if you buy, say, puto bumbong or bibingka in the morning, come night time, you know, you can't mm-hmm. use the nyog anymore, right? Um, no, yeah. For some reason, maybe because it is desiccated to a certain extent. I don't know if it's fully uh, desiccated, but um, the process of roasting it uh, helps uh, preserve it for months, mm-hmm. several, I mean, uh, maybe more than 12 months even. Uh, I, I, I've, I've, I've consumed the... Uh, uh, roasted coconut uh, or palapa uh, that, that, that are actually older than 12 months. And, well, they're not as aromatic as freshly made, yes, mm-hmm. but the, they're, still, they're still okay. Yeah, but the... Uh, now, uh, I'd like to go back now to the gata, you know. Yeah. Uh, sorry to jump. But uh, would the use of gata also apply because I, I heard you say kalding, I mean kambing, there's uh, the, the, the beef, uh, but I did see ulang at one time. Oh, yes. Uh, gata um, is used also in seafood uh, dishes, yeah. in fish dishes. So it's, of course, it's not exclusive to uh, meat. I mean, mm-hmm. it would make sense also for it to be paired, for, for it to be used in um, uh, dishes that uh, have uh, lighter protein. Uh, okay. As mentioned earlier, gata not only provides flavor, but unctuousness. It provides, mm-hmm. you know, fat. No? So, uh, when you have something relatively uh, light, such as, say, dalag or mm-hmm. snake head, um, I think the the, the the richness of uh, gata uh, is, is a very good, uh, enjoyable compliment. Yeah. Uh, is uh, octopus eaten in Mindanao? Octopus is consumed, um, I believe it is, but not so much by the Maguindanaons um, and the Maranao. I, 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 know, I, would, I would guess uh, it mostly by the Asama and the Taosu. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. uh, 
the one time that I had uh, octopus cooked in a very light, you know, it's a very soupy thing. Uh, so very much diluted coconut uh, or is it coconut cream flavored uh, broth was up north, you know. Oh. And uh, uh, so I, I didn't know whether it was a typical thing or it was just a quote unquote incidental or special dish. So because I, I never saw it again, uh, not, not in that area anyway. So yeah. I, I was wondering whether it was something that was uh, uh, throughout the archipelago or in certain areas. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I'm not familiar with uh, the culture of uh, consuming octopus. Pusit, yes. I mean, uh, yes. we shall. Uh, cephalopods, I have experience. I mean, you know, you know, eating. Well, nowadays, you know, it's uh, nowadays. Uh, it's 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 bedlam. Uh, it's it's mixed up, right? Yes. Uh, everything is mixed with uh, everything else. Mm -hmm. But um, again, generally speaking, uh, when you, uh, I think cephalopods are mostly enjoyed by the by the island uh, mm -hmm. uh, by people in the islands. When it's yes, the yeah. island, it's basulta. So basulta is basilan sulutawi tawi. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe in the coastal areas of uh, Lanao and Maguindanao. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, um, uh, Maguindanaons and the Maranaos are uh, quite fond of uh, uh, fresh river. Ah, yeah. I see. Um, so fresh water so, is the preference. Oh, sorry, I mean, sorry, fresh water uh, because yeah. of the rivers and the lakes. Uh -huh. uh, oh, yeah, I suppose preference uh, because, well, if you look at the um, uh, hydrography, the, the geography, of uh, mm -hmm. Lana when you know Kotabato. Yes. Uh, we, well, the Lana, Lana when itself means lake. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, so yes, we uh, you know the prized fish would be the one. But well, one of them would be the one I mentioned earlier. So the snakehead mm -hmm. or Aruan. Yes. Dalag, right. Or Dalag. Mm -hmm. Yes, which we love very much. Uh, really, then, uh, because um, some of the yeah. Visayans naman don't like uh, this. Uh, this fish, no? This uh, well, yeah, snake heads. A, yeah, there's an aversion to it. Um, yeah. Uh, or, yeah, but it, it, to us, it's really... Uh, well, it used to be quotidian. Um, but uh, we noticed, we've been noticing the past years that uh, as with everything else on this earth, um, it's been... Uh, the prices have been rising. So, um, so it's, it's, I don't, it's, it's, now, it's now more of a... Uh, maybe once or twice a week thing. Yeah. So uh, it's a good thing that you mentioned quotidian because the other thing that uh, I was going to ask is in uh, you know Mugindanao or the other uh, Muslim areas, no? is there a difference in the way that coconut is used in quotidian in everyday lutong bahay, or is it yeah. for special occasions only? Um, no, everyday lutong bahay, uh, we do find coconut in such mm -hmm. uh, um, applications in such context. Uh, oh, okay. However, uh, when we speak of um, important occasions or uh, in in Maguindanao culture, uh, there's a there's a you know there's a there's a term for uh, such practices called kanduli. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 kanduli yes. is an act of feeding people, you know, mm -hmm. for for several reasons. Uh, it could be one of several reasons. Um, a lot of times, dishes that make use of coconut milk um, is served. So uh, I mentioned one earlier, linigi, liningil, or linigid, uh, mm -hmm. or um, uh, pinamilit would be one of them also. Um, yes. Even in the sweets uh, or the, they aren't really pastries, but uh, and they aren't desserts either because they're not eaten uh, at the end. Of at the, the end. But uh, th these are, you know, uh, things that are had with coffee and um, tea, perhaps. But uh, coconut milk is used um, in the in the in, in these uh, sweets also. Yeah. Oh. Then uh, maybe uh, how I would like to go towards the end is um, here in the coconut belt uh, in in Luzon. Anyway, uh, there is a practice of just. Uh, just cracking or, or uh, getting get felling a coconut chopping of the head getting 
and drinking the water and then splitting it and eating uh, the meat. Is there yeah. such a practice as well? Uh, is it prevalent in Mindanao? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one of uh, my uh, indulgences, if you can call mm. it that, or uh, <clears throat> um, something I enjoy uh, uh, when, whenever uh, I go to uh, Maguindanao. Um, this, you know, I ask someone to, you know, just uh, especially on a humid afternoon. Um, yeah, that, that, that's just something that uh, I enjoy quite a lot. That's good to know. But, you know, I think uh, what is in order really are two things um, as we uh, bring this uh, podcast to a close. Number one, uh, perhaps we can invite you to give a lecture so we can see the things that you're talking about. And uh, hopefully it can be uh, face-to-face so we can also taste it, not only see it, but uh, taste it as well. And the other thing is really a Palapa festival. Uh, this testing of Palapa, I, I doubt if many people have enjoyed the, this, uh, this savory, this, uh, this tidbit, if I may call it, from yep. uh, Mindanao. And at first, when I, when I saw Palapa for the first time from your sister, Bai, yeah. I thought it was just Maguindanao, but now you tell me that there's a range of it with different variations. It it is truly a magnificent uh, a piece of food stuff, if I may say so. So I hope uh, that we can invite you to do those two things in the future. Uh, um, Palapa uh, Festival uh, taste testing of the range of Palapa, and maybe a lecture so that, as I said, we can see. We can witness the chef in you uh, cook, <laughs> and hopefully the yeah. uh, the how do you call it the, the gastronomes among all of us can can taste oh, yeah. this wonderful uh, food. And uh, again, we thank you uh, very very much for indulging us and for agreeing to be part of uh, the programs of the Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo or Muscat. Maraming salamat, Dato Sharif Pendato. Yeah, thank you very much. To our listeners, thank you for spending time with us. It is our hope that you found this conversation on food with certified food researchers and chef Datu Sharif Pendatun stimulating, opening doors to insights and further thoughts about the coconut, cooking with it, the spectrum and registers of its colors, textures, and tastes. Muscat has planned a number more of podcasts and we invite you to join us as we tackle various usapin with our usapan with experts, storytellers and bearers and custodians of Philippine culture. Maraming salamat po.